Hey guys and welcome back to Vina Wonders. For the month of April, I've been taking part in the TBR Clear Out Readathon, which is being hosted by Katie over on Books and Things. And it's my first, it's my first race in a really, really long while. I haven't done a readathon in years almost, I think. I think the last readathon that I took part in was probably Booktubeathon back in 2017. So it's been almost three years, but I've really been enjoying the books that I've been reading and I've found the experience very immersive. I think especially now that we are on quarantine, it feels really good to have somewhere to escape to. It feels really great that at the end of the day, I know that there's like a book waiting for me and something sort of familiar enough for me to not feel like I need to deal with change, which seems to be all that we're doing nowadays but still new enough that I still feel like it's something adventurous. For today's video, we are going to be talking about The End of the Story by Lydia Davis. Okay, before anything else, I think it's important for me to kind of contextualize this book within Lydia Davis's work. So Lydia Davis is an American writer and she writes in a style that's very short, very sparse, and I think it can be considered something even shorter than flash fiction. I feel like flash fiction would give you a little more breathing room when it comes to becoming immersed in that moment or becoming immersed in whatever situation the character was in. But with Lydia Davis's work, it's always a glimpse, like just a glimpse and then she sort of pulls back. But within that glimpse, it's very focused and very precise. I think that Lydia Davis's language almost borders on obsessive if that makes sense, like um, if there's a scene inside a train cart, she won't just talk about the entire train, she'll talk about one person eating a sandwich by the window and sort of dissect the way that that person is eating that sandwich in particular. I read this piece in The New Yorker called Long Story Short, which was an in-depth interview with her and which really examined her form and the way she wrote and why she wrote that way. And one of the things that she said was that she's obsessed with the appropriateness of language. Um, in particular, she talks about this one book she read where someone said that they were stuffing bottles into a paper bag. And she said that even if, yes, literally, it's fine like to stuff bottles into a paper bag or to say that, it doesn't really make sense because when you say stuff, it's for soft things, like you can stuff a pillow with cotton, but you can't do that to something that's made of glass, which the bottle was. So it's that kind of precision of language um, that Lydia Davis likes to carry throughout her entire body of work. And so I was very intrigued by this book because it's a novel, and I was very, very interested in how Lydia Davis would carry that very obsessive style into something like this. So in a novel, you have, on the one hand, a lot less pressure when it comes to creating like a single narrative or something that has organic unity or something that um, ties together very neatly. Just because you have more words to play with, there are more chapters, there are more ways for your characters to become fleshed out. But knowing Lydia Davis, I knew that she would not write anything that was normal or anything that was your typical novel in structure, in style, and she very much lived up to that expectation of mine. So this novel is plotless in the sense that there is no beginning, middle, end. Um, the entire story kind of goes around in circles. There's one central event, which is an affair that she had with one of her students in grad school. So the guy in this was significantly younger than her and basically the entire book is full of ruminations about her life with the guy, her life after the guy, um, certain things that she had expected while kind of grieving over the, her relationship with this guy and there are even scenes that like take part 20 years in the future where she's already living a completely different life but then a car drives by and she thinks of this guy. So the interesting thing I think about this book is that it takes this one small event and kind of magnifies it, but then also makes it a lot more complicated. And I'm not gonna lie, there are a lot of times when 
I felt like I was gonna go crazy trying to get through this book. The same way that the plot is presented in a very circular manner, the reading experience is also very exhausting in that sense, where you never quite know where you are with this book. You're always as confused as the persona is. And I say persona instead of narrator because to say narrator would presume that there was some kind of structure or like plot. But I say persona because she really, she goes in and out of time, in and out of certain statements of belief. Like she'll say that she believed this one thing, but then later on she wasn't sure if she really believed this or was she only thinking that she believed this because of this. So this book was very tough and very difficult to get through. Um, it's pretty short. It's 200... 35 or 236 pages um, but for all of its difficulty I think I sort of enjoyed that difficulty as well or I think that there was definitely merit in that difficulty there's a certain kind of difficulty that all literature has to have in order to pull you in in order for you to want to stay or want to figure it out and I think that this book is very rich in all of that um, after all, I did finish it. Although it's kind of hard to get used to, and until the end, you don't really get used to the irregular cadence in this book, I do feel like it wasn't conceived arbitrarily. It was definitely something that lent to that feeling of feeling lost and that sort of muddledness of grief that you get when you're heartbroken. So in that sense, there is still a kind of um, organic unity, so to speak, within the text. It's just not presented in a way that's as obvious as it would normally be in other novels. I think as kind of an artifact of loneliness or of grief or coming to terms of failure in a relationship, I think that this was very, very effective. Another thing that I think lent a lot of merit to this book was, of course, the style. Um, I mentioned earlier that Lydia Davis is very precise with language, and I think that kind of precision really lent to the sharpness of this book. With something as plotless as this and as slow moving as this, if it were written in a way that were more vague or more careless, I feel like it would be so easy to disengage with it. But because there are so many little details that are fascinating and so many points in the writing that are so beautiful, it does kind of take you to that through that experience and it makes you want to finish it. This is by no means the easiest book to read and by no means Lydia Davis's most engaging piece of work, but I still think that there is definitely merit to reading it or picking it up, even if it's a little bit difficult. That said, um, I don't think that this is her best work and I don't think that this is a good place to start. With Lydia Davis, I feel like if you haven't read any of her work before, you'll just find this book really, really strange. And instead of seeing it as like a deviation from her normal form or like taking her normal form to another level, I think that if you start with this book, you will probably not want to pick up any other Lydia Davis book ever. So I would say start with her short fiction and then move on to this later on if you enjoy her style. So that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed this um, style of review, which I guess is less straightforward and less um, straight to my opinion about it than my other videos. If you've read this book, please let me know. Um, let me know your thoughts on it. If you DNF'd it, I'd love to hear <laughs> your DNFing experience as well. That's it for this video. Thank you guys and I'll see you next time. Bye!